So last time I was here, three years ago, I was under the impression that the intake manifold gasket has failed and that's why I had a little bit of seepage here. But in fact, what's happening is... This is the one that's failed because now three years later, I'm still losing a little bit of coolant. You can see it's not losing a lot, but I've noticed some drippage and sure enough, there's a gasket right under that overpass line here, pipe. So I need to undo a bolt here, a bolt in the back, this one, this one, and I think I'm gonna replace both of them so that way there's no issue. Now some people will also report a leak at the front overpass pipe here. Um, everything looks pretty dry here, so I'm not going to worry about that one yet. Although if you were to do preventative maintenance and you're gonna start replacing stuff, probably this would be a good one to replace also. But then now we're talking, well, should we replace the starter? Should we replace anything else? Now, for those of you who just tuned in and you haven't seen my original video, which I'm gonna put the link to in the description below this video, a nice step-by-step -step with torque specs, everything included, how I replaced this filter. Basically what I did is I, instead of replacing the internal filter, which actually was disintegrated and it was gone, unless previous owner maybe took it out. I put this external filter on here to just help to protect the system from contamination. And three years later, it's been working well, no limp mode, nothing like that. So I'm going to go to my uh, Lexus parts department tomorrow morning, pick up a couple of gaskets here, fix this for good, reassemble, I mean, clean it up first, reassemble and should be good to go. My truck is at 129,000 miles at this time, and this is a 2009. It's a pain in the ass, but what are you gonna do? All right, friends, so here's the concoction I came up with to drain the coolant. So you have the drain cock here, and then your skid plate actually has a little hole down here and through that I pass a little piece of tubing and then we install that on there goes on like this boom and then of course it drains down and it's gonna drain down to my bucket here no mess coolant drain so we're in the process of removing the crossover pipe and one thing you need to realize that this pipe when that gets unbolted you have the coolant lines here on top that need to be disconnected. And this pipe goes underneath here and it actually has this O-ring that cannot be reused. So make sure you use, you order the new O-ring and then we can deal with that one later. But once you undone this bolt, this bolt, this one, and one behind there, guess what? the crossover pipe is still attached. And what's holding it on is the two check valves here for the secondary air injection system. So what you need to do next is to remove this 12 millimeter bolt and then there's one right behind there. So nice thing to get this, get a pry bar and pull this up. And then same thing on this check valve, you need to remove this 12 millimeter bolt and then one behind it because they kind of come in and they secure the chuck valves to the back of the pipe. Once those are removed or disconnected, then you can pull the uh, lift the crossover pipe and then replace these gaskets. It's a pain in the ass, but what are you gonna do? All right, so this guy's not budging, which means we're still connected to the air injection pump plumbing here. So, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this clamp here, cut this hose. I'm gonna to have to get a new hose for the air injection system. I'm gonna need a knife to cut it because it's not going to come off on its own. So I'm gonna do one of these things. Yeah, it's not gonna pull off. This guy needs to be cut. So because this hose is so brittle, really more like a piece of plastic now. So what I did is I cut a little slit through here, which will allow me to peel that. And that way we can remove this. And now you can kind of see how 
I've opened up the hose over here as well, so that will allow me to remove this brittle hose. All right, now this has been removed. You can kind of see I had to cut that open because it's hard as a rock. It's not compressible anymore. So I'll be replacing this guy. All right, so I just removed the top bolt over here. I'm going to disconnect the two hoses to the air valves. So this one and one underneath it for the left air pump or for the passenger side is out. You need to work on these two bolts, this one and one underneath there. Okay, so this is the new gasket in place now. I've cleaned up the mating surface and we're ready to mount it back on. This was a major pain to remove because of those check valves of the secondary air injection system, but that's what you gotta do. And the part number on these water pipe gaskets is 63415002. You need two of them for the rear and two if you're gonna do the front overpass pipe too. So now we're reassembling everything in reverse order. This bolt, this bolt, this one, that one. And now I'm putting the uh, bypass valve bolts back on. So the top one, there's one on the bottom, this one and that one. All right, so here's the replacement hose for the uh, secondary air injection system that goes from the pump to the uh, check valves. So this is the one I cut. I'm going to transfer the clamps onto the new hose and get that replaced uh, because this thing obviously is out of commission and it's hard as a rock where this thing is nice and pliable. And we're continuing the reassembly of the GX470 here to use ZFE. So I've replaced this hose here, brand new, it's like 54 bucks from the local Toyota parts department. I've got that all sealed up and ready to go. Got the pipe connected here. So the next one is this guy. We need to replace this O-ring and that's going to get mounted like so, which of course this is gonna get connected there. And then of course that gets hooked up to this pipe over there. And we've got a little bit of silicone paste on it just to lube up the ring. And let's get that in there. Got the pipe installed, secured there, and also made sure that airlines to those valves are secured in a little bracket. And now we're just going to go ahead and hook up the coolant pipe right over. The coolant pipe is on and connected. Oh, and don't forget to secure the wiring harness to the little bracket on the pipe. I'm also replacing the valve cover ventilation hoses, ECV valve hoses, whatever you want to call them. So this is the driver's side and the, the passenger side one I removed. And this is the reason why. You can see they're actually are cracking. And as this crack propagates, it will likely create um, a leak, a vacuum leak. So we don't want that to happen. And they are fairly, uh, still compressible, but pretty rigid. So these new ones are much softer. You can see how squishy they are. So the passenger side part number is 12261-5060. And the driver's side is 12261-5060. Five zero zero seven zero. Let's get those replaced. All the hoses are connected. We're going to go ahead and remove the masking tape and install the intake manifold back on. You need to clean up the mating surfaces, make sure everything is nice and clean. sure all the hoses are cleared you have to pass the fuel line under the rail and route it over that way and now we're just going to double check that the gasket is sitting 
flat and we'll go ahead and put those bolts back on for the intake manifold. Connect the throttle body and then just follow the video that I'll link in the description below for the rest of the reassembly. Step by step, it's all outlined very nicely. And I'm going to replace this hose over here because it is pretty brittle. So I don't want that to create any leaks, air leaks in the future. Something tells me this is not an original cap. So it looks like there's been some leakage here. So what I've done is I purchased a new one from Toyota and this is the part number for the radiator cap. So let's get this thing installed. That's what it's supposed to look like. Looks like a denso part with the D on there. Unless it stands for D-cap, that's fine too. D-radiator cap. Rubber's kind of swollen on the old one. So we're going to clean up this one and install the new one. New radiator cap. Coming on hot. Boom. Beauty. Thanks for watching guys. Please follow me by subscribing to my channel and we'll be doing some more projects this summer on the GX. Thanks for watching. Bye.